So many people ask me about that big call to be on TV, that call to get on Big Brother, that big moment that changes everything. Well, where that was true, it did change everything, but that's not where my story began. It actually started when I was a child. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a journey to learn more about how it all began. And it's not just about that phone call. It predates that moment. It's not about that moment and I stepped into that secluded location and charmed the pants off a bunch of Hollywood producers. It started a long time before that. Here's my origin story. Before we get going, remember to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Let's get to it. So we're on the way to where it all began. First stop, Los Molinos Elementary School. I, um, I grew up in LA as a young kid and a lot went on there. It's um, uh, very eventful, a lot of life events took place when I was there. And um, of course, as you can imagine, a whole lot of bullying because um, I look different. And you know, it was, it was hard at the time, but it really shaped me into who I am today. And I uh, can't wait to share that with everyone. You know, I haven't been here since the sixth grade when I graduated. So this is gonna be a, kind of an interesting experience to come back uh, well into my adulthood. It's gonna be bizarre, actually. So we're here at Los Molinos Elementary School, and it looks like it's uh, pretty locked up. I really wanna get inside. And get a closer look. So we're gonna try to have to uh, find a way in. So given my design background, when I get that question, why did this happen to you? It sparks an interesting curiosity. As a designer, I'm always trying to solve for the why, but it takes me back to my childhood. It takes me back to the events that took place and how I responded to them along the way. This is the basketball court where I was never picked to play. Every time I would line up right here, hoping that they were gonna pick me. A stand, all right. And they would go one by one down the list. And sometimes there weren't even enough people to play the game, but they would just like cut it off and I would be sitting on the sidelines. I couldn't figure out exactly why I would never get picked uh, to play the game. And it wasn't until I was starting to get really beat up all the time that I realized that um, there was probably a reason behind why I wasn't being included. When I remember Los Molinos, it is this area that continues to haunt me. So I don't even think about any other parts of the school. This is where most of the bullying happened, actually. It started in the third grade. That's when I knew I was different. That's when kids used to pick on me the most. And I knew I was different and, and awkward and nerdy, but I knew it was more than that starting then because, you know, I remember this day particularly, we lined up and one of the kids ran out of the line and started chasing me, grabbed me by the back of the shirt, tripped me, and then I fell flying face first into the asphalt. And it was a bloody mess, half my face. We were both sent to the principal's office as if we were both victims and both guilty of some crime. But I was the only one who was victimized that day. Being here at this school taught me a lot of lessons. One that I was different and it's probably gonna be a long journey. Two, that I was gonna get beat up and that was something that was inevitable. And then three, why I was being targeted. And it had a lot to do with my ethnic background and my religion, unfortunately. And it wasn't until here did I realize that that was going to be a subject for which people wanted to use against me to inflict harm. I came to school 
to be a kid, to make friends and make memories, to get an education. But instead, I was getting my face pounded into the asphalt or my head smashed against that water fountain over there every time I got a drink. Um, and it dawned on me that it was more than just people didn't like me or because I was an outcast. They were making fun of me and my religion, asking me about my uncle, Saddam Hussein. In that moment, it was the first time it occurred to me that, one, it was okay to fight for myself. And two, I wasn't the only one who was carrying this pain. That there were others who had also been bullied, and there were others who needed somebody to stand up for them. That's when I started getting ideas that one day I was going to be bigger, badder, more successful than any of these people, and I was going to come back and fight with a vengeance. It's not enough to get a phone call. It's not enough to get an interview. It's not enough to get people to be curious and inquire about you. It's the moment in which you have to respond and live up to that call. All right, we're here at Newton Middle School, home of the Knights. I grew up in a family of immigrants. My parents never went to college and they came to a country where they didn't know the language. Neither of them spoke English. And so it was left up to me to help them. And so now here I am trying to fend for myself at school and help my parents read their mail and get by and being the eldest son, I have to also look out for my sisters. Now I was hoping I could make some friends and maybe they'll take the edge off a bit, get some support. But that didn't really work out to my advantage as I quickly realized. One day, um, I was playing basketball. I wasn't very good because I never got selected to pit play, so I never practiced. And I was playing right over there and the ball ricocheted off the backboards so hard and it hit one of the guys in the face. Well, it just turns out that um, him and all his friends took great offense to that. Um, so they decided that they were gonna try to uh, beat me up. It was that week that I had seven people jump me in broad daylight during lunchtime while the entire school watched right here. Not even my so-called friends came in to help. No one came to stop it. And they kept punching me in the face. So you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with Big Brother? What does this have to do with the call I received to come on the show that changed everything. This has everything to do with Big Brother. You see, the events that took place in my life shaped me for who I am. And so when I got that call, I said, I have to do it. Even though I was terrified, even though I thought I was gonna fall flat on my face and people might laugh at me and might ridicule me, I had to, I had to do it. And so when I walked in that day and I spoke to the producers on camera for the interview and they asked me, so are you gonna take off your shirt? Are you gonna get into showmances? Are you gonna, are you gonna flex and have a good time and party? And I said to them, no, I'm not because that's not me and you've got the wrong guy. What I asked them was, when was the last time you had a Muslim on the show? And they said, never. And then I also asked them, when's the last time you had an Iraqi on the show? 
especially during the Gulf War against Iraq? And they said, never. And I said, well, I think this probably about time that you did. And they agreed. I spent a lifetime getting ridiculed and punished for being different. Things that were completely out of my control. And then I got that call. And my differences became something of an asset. Something that got me on the show. It was almost celebrated. I realized it was in that moment that it was going to be my time to tell my story. And that's why I happily accepted. I got punished for my differences. I decided to own it, allow it to shape me in ways that were positive, to have an outlook that was constructive. And I told myself that I'm going to use this so that it doesn't happen to anybody, not just people that looked like me or came from where I came from, but anybody who was faced with the same type of ridicule and punishment for being different. And I was going to make sure that it started with my story and I wanted to make sure that it didn't end there. That's why That's why I got that call that day. And that's why I got that call 15 years later. These are the types of things that serendipitously happen to all of us, but nothing catches fire because we're just not ready. And I think that's what it comes down to. I think it's important for all of us to be prepared for those moments, to, to take action, to be great, it takes a lifetime, but you can blow it in one moment. And I'm happy I didn't. I'm happy it worked out. And I'm happy that I got to tell my story. Ultimately, it's important to be ready for whatever life throws at you. And sometimes the challenges that are taking place in your life don't make a whole lot of sense and you feel like down and out about why it's happening to you, trust me, I did. And at the time, I just wanted to be a kid and I just wanted to live my life. But I always try to make good choices. And more importantly, I always try to have the right headspace, make sure I was not down and out, didn't lose hope, because I knew that there was going to be a better day one day and that day came and I felt like I was ready for it. Answering the call wasn't the hard part. Convincing the producers to choose me wasn't the hard part either. Going through that mental challenge of being in a big brother house with such an eclectic group of people, and trying to survive, that was really challenging. And I got to do it three times. So I consider myself very fortunate. So when it's all said and done, be ready for your call. No matter what it looks like or what it's for, it'll happen. So that was it. That was my first YouTube video. So if you like what you saw and you want to see more, remember to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Thanks.